Welcome to another video. I am seriously hoping that I can make as many videos as I used to make before the year runs to an end. So let's hope that this is another good start for me. Because here we have a polynomial that is not explicitly given. We're given a composition of the polynomial. That is, the p of x minus 1 is then composed with itself and our result is 1 plus x to the 16th. So they want us to find p of 2. The problem with this problem is that we don't know what the polynomial is. We just know a composition of the polynomial. So is there a way we can find p of x itself, this guy? Now, because it's a polynomial, life is a lot easier than you can imagine. Because there's a very basic principle that when you compose a polynomial with itself, the degree of the composition is the square of the degree of the original polynomial. Okay, let's get into the video. So this is what I mean. Let's say you have a certain polynomial. Let's say the polynomial is defined as, let's say, um, ax raised to power n. This is this polynomial plus blah, 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 all the way. We don't know this degree. We don't know this constant. We don't really care about those, about the constant. But one thing we know is that if you compose p with itself, you see what happens is that everywhere you see x, you're going to put all of this back inside. So this is going to be a, instead of writing x, you're going to be writing all of this polynomial. You see that? So it's going to be p of x raised to power n, which in this case is a times ax raised to power n raised to power n. From the laws of exponents that we know, we know that this is going to be a times a, to the n times x to the n times n, which is n squared. So this is basically a to the n plus 1 x to the n squared. It doesn't matter what you did to it, you're going to have the highest degree of the composition to be n squared. So if you refer to this problem that we have, if this is 16, then the original polynomial must be a fourth degree polynomial because you must have squared it to get 16. We just don't know how many terms are in the polynomial. And this is where there's a slight confusion and the tr this trouble. Okay, so I'm going to do it in two ways. I'm going to make a claim. I'm going to show it's true. But in case I don't want to make a claim, I'm going to show you an alternative way to show that it is actually what I claimed. So this is my claim for this video. The original polynomial claim. P of x equals x to the fourth plus one. I'm telling you that the polynomial we're looking for is x to the fourth plus one. And that, if you plug in two, you're gonna get two raised to power four, which is 16 plus one equals 17. That's it, that's the answer. Okay, that is, and p of two equals two raised to power four plus one, which is equal to 17. This is the final answer. Okay, now, if you see what I see, great. If you don't see it, let's keep going in this video. I'm going to show you why this is true. And well, if this is true, this is clearly true and we're done. So the first proof I'm going to show is that I'm going to show that if this is P of X and you put this here, this is what you're going to get ultimately if you compose it with itself. P of X equals X to the fourth plus one. Now, I'm going to do a composition that looks like this. P of x minus 1. P of x minus 1 will be equal to x to the 4th plus 1 minus 1, which is x to the 4th. So, P of P of x minus 1 will be equal to P of x to the 4th. Now, go back to the definition of the polynomial. 
the polynomial p of anything is that thing raised to power 4 plus 1. So p of x to the 4th will be equal to x to the 4th raised to power 4 plus 1, which is 1 plus x to the 16th. Because by the laws of exponents, you're supposed to multiply these two powers. You notice that what we got here is what we got here. So clearly, the claim that I made was actually true. You don't like this method, right? <laughs> what if you could not figure out, you, can ju just, you cannot just look at it and say, hey, I know what this is going to be. So let's do it another way. This time, I am not going to make a claim. We're going to actually solve and make sure that we get x to the fourth plus one as the polynomial. So this part of the video is for those who say, well, what if I cannot guess x to the fourth plus one? So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to assume, okay, again, remember, the first assumption is that if you compose any polynomial by itself, the degree of the composition is the square of the degree of the original. That is a fact, okay? That's where we're going to start. We'll say, since P, since P of P of X, minus 1 equals 1 plus x to the 16th p of x must be a quartic polynomial okay i'm just going to write quartic poly okay just to save space it must be a fourth degree polynomial now what is the general form of a fourth degree polynomial well it's going to be that is, we can say, that is um, p of x will be, let's call it ax to the fourth plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. This is the polynomial. It does not mean that the polynomial contains all of these terms. The only term it is certain to contain is ax to the fourth. We don't know what a is, but we know this term is what is necessary to make it a quartic. All of these are not relevant. It doesn't have to contain any of these other terms. What to do might look a bit confusing at first, but if you pay attention, you're going to get what it looks like, okay, ultimately. So this is the polynomial that we're supposed to get because it has to have the square root of 16, which is 4, as its degree, and this is the general form it will be. Now, we do not, we can easily tell, easily, look, if you compose this with itself, the highest degree is going to be x to the 16th, and because none of these lower degrees show up in the composition, you would know that all these numbers will be zeros. The only two numbers that count would be ax to the 4th plus e. And you're going to see it. So let's do a composition according to what we have. P of P of X minus 1 will now be written as, watch this, A. Everywhere you see X here, you go replace it with P of X minus 1. So we're going to have P of X minus 1 raised to the power 4 plus B p of x minus 1 raised to the power 3 plus c times p of x. Let's continue here. Plus d times p of x minus 1 raised to the power 1. And then plus, well, there's no more x. See, the last x was here. So we're just going to add e. Okay. Like I said, it is important to ignore this, this, and this. Otherwise, you'll be wasting your time. And even here, you can just do minimal work because what we have is going to be taking B equals C equals D equals zero, which is necessary for this problem. Otherwise, you'll be wasting your time. We're going to say that A 
times. Now the polynomial itself is going to be ax to the fourth, no, a times ax to the fourth plus. You see, because all of these terms are zeros, you might as well just ignore them. Plus, tap, 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 plus e raised to power 4. That's what you get from the first one. And then you ignore these and you come here, plus e will be equal to 1 plus x to the 16th. Now notice again, all of these are zeros. So if this is all you're dealing with, what you're going to have would be, if you raise this to the fourth power, you end up with a times a to the fourth x to the 16th plus, you have another set of x to the 12, x to the whatever, whatever, but none of them is going to be this. So you ignore them also because they don't exist. And what just happens is you're going to have this raised to power 4. This is going to be plus. Hey, where is the minus 1? There's supposed to be a minus 1 because we're subtracting 1. So this is going to be minus 1. Come on. Minus 1. Here. Um, raised to power 4. Yes, that's how it's supposed to be. Plus e minus 1 e minus 1, now raised to the power 4. So, we might as well, plus e equals 1 plus x to the 16th. Mm. So if we split this up, what are we going to get? We might as well say that... Um, Oh my, okay, let's break this up. This is going to be a to the fifth, x to the sixteenth, plus a e minus one to the fourth plus e will be equal to one plus x to the sixteenth. Yes, so if you compare both sides, remember two polynomials are equal if they have the same degrees, that's number one, and the corresponding coefficients are equal. So, the, this a to the fifth must be one, and a times e minus one raised to the power four plus e must be one. So clearly, a to the fifth equals the coefficient of x to the sixteenth, so a to the fifth is equal to one, which implies a equals one. We're done. And then we go here, and say a e minus 1 raised to the power 4 plus e must be equal to 1. And we can now begin all the math. We already know that a equals 1, so we can just write 1 here. And then we can move this one over to the side. So we have e minus 1 raised to the power 4 plus e minus 1 will be equal to 0. Let's make room for this one. Factor e minus 1 out, so you have e minus 1 factored into e minus 1 raised to power 3 plus 1, this way, equals 0. We can easily say that e minus 1, e minus 1 equals 0, or this one, or e minus 1 cubed plus 1 equals 0. So we have e equals 1, or unless I made a mistake in this computation, um, but let's see. So that means that e minus 1 cubed equals negative 1. e minus 1 will be negative 1. Well, there are three solutions, but we'll just stick to the real ones, okay? e minus 1 will be negative 1, and then e will be equal to 0, which implies e equals 0. But e equals 0 does not work in our situation because the composition will not give us what we have. So this is the valid answer for e, and this is the valid answer for a. And those are the two things we need to come back to this polynomial we remember we said B, C, D must be zero because they disappear on the right hand side. So even if we had written them, we would have had to conclude that B, C, and D comparing um, coefficients on both sides were zeros. That's why I didn't write them. And here, um, polynomial of X will be equal to one X to the fourth. All these zeros we ignore plus one. And that's it. 
never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.